Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make the RS, otherwise known as the SR flip-flop. Uh, S and R are standing for set and reset. Now, the RS flip-flop is a basic one-bit memory cell. And the way it works is you can set that memory cell to be high or low and then you, you can reset it. So essentially, S is the value you're, you will be concerned with and I, w I would think it's best for you to ignore the R. Uh, you, the way you should see R is it's, it's nothing to do with your memory and it just resets the memory whenever you want it to be reset. Now that's the way I think about it. I think that's a reasonable way to, to think about it. Now, there are different ways of building an RS flip-flop. You can use NOR gates or you can use NAND gates. The, the, difference, is, uh, it, the difference is whether or not they're low or high triggered. And what I mean by that is a NAND gate like I'm using here, okay, you will write or you will set it by putting set low, so it's low triggered. And if you're using a NOR gate, it will be high triggered, so uh, it's when S goes high, it will be triggered. So that means that for a NAND gate setup, that both S and R will always be high. That's the default configuration. And in order to write to my memory cell, I will put S low. And then I'll turn it back high immediately because I've written to the cell and that's how I write to it. If you had a, na a NOR gate set up, both S and R would be low and you would turn S high and then that, that would write to the memory cell. So that would be high triggered and I'm using a NAND gate setup which is low triggered. Okay, here is the, the truth table or a, or a variation of the truth table. This is this is the way I like to think about it. Now once again I'm using a NAND gate setup so this is specific only for this particular RS, RS flip-flop. So the way it works is you have two inputs S and R set and reset and two outputs Q and something I didn't write in it, not Q. Q and, did I go back into focus? Yes, Q and not Q. The way this works is the default setting is S high and R high and that will do nothing to your circuit or do nothing to your output, it'll have it in the previous configuration. So whatever setup it's in, it'll stay like that. And how you write to the cell is you, you turn S low and then bring it back high. Or you can just leave it low, but it, it makes no difference. The best way to do it is just put it straight back high, like this, and leave R uh, unchanged, and what it'll do is it'll set your output or your memory bit high. It'll have written a 1 to your memory bit, and your not Q value will, you will, will not have changed. And now in order to then reset your memory your memory cell and, and make your make put write a zero to it is that you reset it by putting your R low, then high, keeping your S value at high, and you will reset your memory cell. Remember, the Q is your output, that is your memory. This is you could, to be honest, you could probably ignore the not Q, just like you could ignore the R, but uh, it's put in there just for completeness sake. So what we have here is the circuit diagram or one of the circuit diagrams that kind of um, a, a simpler circuit diagram. Okay, here we have NAND gates, two NAND gates. We have set, reset, Q and not Q. Remember, set is how you write to the cell and Q is the, the value of the cell. Not Q, I, I could actually, you could ignore not Q and pretend it didn't exist if that made it easier for you. And R is how you reset it. And the important thing here is your NAND gates, the output of one NAND gate is fed back into the input of the second one. And the input output of the second one is fed back into the input of the first one. And that's how you set it up in terms of just NAND gates. Now, uh, because I have been making a series of videos on logic gates, if you want to learn how to make a NAND gate or any of those uh, other gates, see previous videos. And I think that's the best way to look at that. So this is kind of the cul culmination of uh, a series of videos. So if things aren't making sense, look back at other videos and, and they, it should make sense then. Now to point out, as normal, I'm using uh, bipolar junction transistors, BJTs. And the ones I'm using are, uh, well, I'm using a BC547, which is also known as a 2N2222 transistor. All resistors are 600 ohms and my input is 9, 9 volts, which is not standard. Usually 5 volt is standard. Now, here is this circuit in transistors, or physically put in how you might make this. And it looks quite convoluted, but it's not that difficult, because, oh, I see, uh, I actually see something I didn't wire in. I'll, I'll fix that in a moment. So anyway, basically we have um, two NAND gates, 
and this area here if you've looked at my previous videos you'll, you'll recognize as a NAND gate and this area here is another NAND gate and you also recognize this here is an output of this NAND gate and this here is the output of this NAND gate and what I've done is I've linked that output to the input of the second transistor and I've linked this output to the input of the first transistor now what I didn't put in was this emitter going to ground and I'll just do that just one moment please okay so like I said look at previous videos if you're getting kinda confused um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try and build this and see what happens now as per usual I have put in many of the wires required in order to build the circuit just to make life easier for myself so that's my breadboard as per normal and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to build this this NAND gate consisting of two transistors so I'm going to move through this reasonably quickly because it's like I said it's it's the same exact same procedure as many of my other videos and it's just two, two sets of NAND gates so first of all I have a 600 ohm resistor going from uh, my high line, by the way, just in case you can't, you don't know this, is up here. My low line is down here. So my resistor from my high line here. Actually, I'll put in my transistor first. Transistor first. I give you. Uh, I'll give you a close up in a moment. Transistor first, and my resistor in series is that from the high. The resistor goes into the uh, the collector, the collector of my transistor. Transistor number two whereby the, uh, the collector of transistor 2 goes to the emitter of transistor 1. So, so far what I've done is I've, uh, I've put in this wire here, or this resistor going to the collector here, and I've put the emitter of this to the collector of the, this one here. And I have, I'm going to put in the resistors going into the bases now. These two brown wires are going into the bases of both transistors, and I will put a resistor in series of that to the outputs this now this is an AND gate and I should also I, I will ground this I will ground this NAND gate at the very end because it it'll cover everything else so what we have here is my high line through the resistor into the collector of the first transistor the base going into this resistor here into this output, this, this green output here the, the collector and emitter connected there the exact same thing with the, with the base and into another resistor and here is the emitter which will be grounded in a moment now point note here uh, oh yes, the point note here is these, these, these outputs I'm just leaving them separate for the moment, you can ignore them so this is, this is a NAND gate, a standalone NAND gate the output of it, see the white wire you can ignore for the moment. So the output goes from the emitter, and it, it just it's just just here for the moment. So that yellow wire basically is that yellow wire is here on my on my circuit diagram here. So what I've built is the resistor into the collector, the resistor into the base, the collector emitter connected, and this base wire here as well. And I have an output here and here which are currently not connected. So what I'm going to do now is build my second NAND gate down here. So, let's do that. Transistor 1, or tra well, transistor 3 in this case. Connected in the exact same way to transistor 4, like that. They are, they are th at the base wires going into two resistors or a resistor for each one of them Come on. so I just want to make sure I haven't, I'm not making mistakes as I go along and I will uh, just connect up the collector here 
to that resistor and up to high. And I'll, sh I'll give you a close up in a moment, just bear with me please. Right. So, this is NAND gate number two down here. So, we have a high line down here. This white line going, oh, I get that in focus, from the white into the resistor into the collector. The collector of number two is joined to the emitter of number one, and that is the, the emitter of that is grounded. The base wires are here and here. And as per normal, they go into resistor each, and they go into two output wires, those two green wires there. The output of this wire, or of this NAND gate, is this yellow wire here, which in a moment will be grounded, and also the, the first NAND gate will be grounded. So I'll show you where we are now on our circuit diagram, once I get back in focus. So what we have is, the two small yellow wires I showed you are just here, and here. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is, I haven't forgotten by the way that I have to ground my 